Hello, this is Tony, and uh, today I like to talk a little bit about Apple machines. And uh, this week I found this one on my doorstep because it was not used anymore. Uh, let's see if it works and uh, if we can improve it if it works. This is the G5, which means Generation 5. Uh, it does not have an Intel processor yet because this was from the time, well, let's say 10, 13 years ago when Apple still was using its own processors. Uh, well, using its own, like they use Samsung in the iPhone. I think in these types they used uh, the processor from Motorola, at least they did in the generation uh, 3. Um, so uh, let's see what's inside. Well, before we open them up, I, I really like to say that, that the design they have is, is really amazing because even now it is like uh, 13 years old, this machine really looks super, super cool. Well, I, I like to go through the history a little bit. I found this website, the Home Computer Museum. Thank you guys for uh, making this uh, sum up of all the computers. Uh, well, here you see all the all the types they have. Uh, obviously, I did not start using it from uh, 76 because I was still playing with my blocks. Uh, but the first one I had was this uh, Generation 3. And you see they use uh, Apple Power Macintosh. And the power means uh, it was called the Power PC, Power Macintosh, because they use their own uh, processors. And uh, yeah, here they wanted to be a little bit more fancy. So they use all these funny colors. That's a G4 and a G3. And of course, this nice uh, ball. Um, here we have our uh, Power G5. Uh, that is this one what we have here. So the ones that are shown here are all with, uh, yeah, with Apple's own uh, processor. Uh, all the newer ones were, uh, yeah, now the newer ones all run Intel. I will show you uh, the first uh, type. It all started with the uh, Mini Mac. Yeah, and this is about uh, 10, 13 years ago when uh, Apple decided to also produce for the mass and they um, needed a cheaper processor. So what I did, I asked uh, Intel and uh, what I did, I just built in a uh, Core Duo. And it was uh, one of the first. Um, it is very small, which is nice. It was very compact. It's the size of a CD. Uh, the only thing is if you bought a cheaper model, it only came with uh, one megabyte of memory and of course in that time the, they didn't use the SSD drive yet so it was not that fast. Um, I did an upgrade uh, later. Um, it's a bit uh, tricky to open. This is what you need. Look at the paint uh, tool. <laughs> uh, yeah, you open like this. And then you carefully open. And below the CD drive that is a uh, yeah, thing here. Uh, you find the uh, the HDD, and you can uh, replace that with the SDD. And I also did a memory upgrade. Uh, no movie about it, so I'm showing you the pictures. And afterwards, it is. Apple provides also the program uh, bootcamp, which made it possible to. Uh, also create a partition of uh, Windows because it's uh, running Intel, so that is possible. And then you can create a, a dual boot, uh, which I did here on the Mini Mac. As you can see, it's running Windows 10. This one here is uh, slightly newer and it does have an Intel and uh, I'm using it right now. Okay, that's great. It uh, did start up and uh, yeah, it's, it is not that fast, but uh, it, it, it runs fine. And yeah, the cool little things. What, what Apple does now is just connecting the monitor with just one cable. This one cable has the power, the USB, the video itself, of course. So when you put the computer itself, when you put that on the, on the floor, because it's, it's huge, 
um, yeah, you can just connect your keyboard and your mouse uh, through the screen because it has a built-in uh, USB hub. All these little things make, uh, yeah, make it really the final touch of Apple. If you look at the properties, it is, uh, it is a dual processor powered G5. Uh, that is cool. And the memory is 2.5 gigs, so maybe we can enlarge that. And uh, as I already expected, it is a Western Digital uh, HCD instead of uh, uh, SSD. So by, by increasing the memory and increasing the or changing the hard drive into a solid state, uh, yeah, we can improve a lot. But uh, I, I, I like it, it looks very nice. Okay, now I'd like to open it to see uh, what's inside. And uh, instead of using a screwdriver, you just have uh, a little lever. You pull the lever and then the board comes out. This, <laughs> these are these little details and look at the inside. My God, I don't know if you ever have opened uh, a <laughs> standard PC. Well, let me tell you, it doesn't look like this. This is nice. Okay, and even they, they have this nice plastic to, I think it's to improve the airflow to, to call the machine because it is a dual G5 and according to the, the specs it's running on 16,000 megahertz. I'm not sure they added an extra zero by mistake, but that looks really fast. Then it runs on 16G, well, maybe. I don't know that, but it is fast and they have two of them in so yeah look look at this they even have a grip to to pull the ah, this is so nice all these details even on the inside well the fan just uh, slides out uh, let's see if we can get to the cpus okay i also took uh, out the 5g uh, cover uh, g5 cover sorry uh, yeah, the heatsink uh, really looks uh, impressive. I will not continue uh, going any further, taking it apart, because I have no interest in uh, replacing the CPUs, uh, especially if they are uh, 16,000 megahertz. Then I don't think I can find any <laughs> other one. Uh, so and it is what it is. So, but uh, what what is interesting is the memory, and there are still four. Here there are two left. Here there are two left. So we still have four slots. So I will look in my stock if I still have some memory. And uh, yeah, that that always works if I will adding memory. So let's see. And uh, this is what it needs. Forty two hundred PC. So let's find out DDR2 533. Well, I did find some extra memory. Uh, it is a little bit faster. It is uh, DDR2 like the other. Instead of uh, 553, this is the 667. The pins line up. So uh, I would like to try that because this is 4. So I think 4 megabytes instead of uh, two will absolutely make a huge difference it uh, did boot it uh, did start it, we have now four gigabytes uh, it did boot uh, a lot quicker but i think we can do a lot more if we put in a ssd drive which we are going to do now okay, every time uh, i'm working on the on the apple of course i take out uh, the power plug huh? you don't want to be uh, electrocuted or damage something as you can look here in the top there is the yeah the conventional uh, hdd uh, which we are going to replace now for uh, ssd the solid state version and uh, i have one here you can buy them on the internet around 25 euros by now it is only uh, 120 gigs. Uh, well, also SATA, and uh, it will run at least five times faster. So let's see. Okay, here we have uh, taken it out. Uh, well, if you can see, the connections are the same. We only need to look at the left uh, flat connections, the black ones, this one and this one. So, well. They are a lot smaller, but 
because there is no yeah it's a solid state so there is no turning parts in it like is in the in the conventional hard disk so it doesn't need to be fixed uh, that well I can just throw it in here connect it but I will put some uh, tape so it uh, doesn't shake too much five plate was uh, locked by a little plastic pin uh, I did uh, push it back but I will not put the pin in because maybe I like to go in there again and uh, yeah I put uh, everything back together again and because we re replaced the hard disk uh, there is no operating system and uh, luckily I also got the uh, installation disks uh, I was doubting a bit if I would uh, just clone the current disk uh, well I don't have the cloning software for Apple and it doesn't uh, run on Intel so I could not use a lower level uh, made for uh, Intel uh, so what I could do is maybe clone it with my Windows laptop and then just clone uh, the external disk to the external disk uh, but then of course I need two USB adapters that can power the disks so what I decided to do just to yeah, install it uh, from clean because I do have the installation disks uh, but now somehow I need to open the drawer <laughs> and there is no button uh, so uh, I remember from the past uh, that uh, from the G3 that uh, you need to push the mouse button and then power on the system and then it will open the drawer so let's see if that uh, works yes uh, that did uh, still work so just push one of the mouse buttons because remember Apple in the past only had one button but yeah okay uh, because I'm a Windows user I just click the last button it did take a while before it uh, noticed I was pushing the button but in the end it, uh, it opened and as you can see there is no operating system and then you find <laughs> the old uh, icons uh, again so what we do we put uh, installation disk number one in there um, I think we need to boot then holding the C from uh, CD drive and then it will boot from the disk and then it will probably just guide me through the menu so that's what I'm going to do uh, yes that also uh, seem to have worked still so not much changed between the generation 3 and 5 with these uh, tricks uh, well I can hear it's uh, loading so uh, we continue later so there we have the installer okay here is our first uh, problem <laughs> select uh, the volume uh, where to install and uh, yeah the, it's an empty disk so there is no volume created uh, the option menu is uh, gray we can only go back so let's see if we find something in the utilities uh, to fix this yes here we have a disk utility uh, let's try that one okay that's good it uh, did find the dvd the install dvd and our disk so let's see if we can create a, a volume okay in the partition menu we're gonna create a new partition we I just call it the operating system OS because later if I add the second disk I can call the data or whatever I want to do but uh, I call it OS you pick the extended journals and then the, the size is automatically there and then we probably click on the partition okay I do see it created a partition so let's see if we exit uh, this disk utility if we can go back to the installer the installer but uh, it did not work but uh, I see now that here you can mount it and well the Apple system is based on, on, on Linux so we probably need to mount it because if I here see it's not mounted so it will not see it so let's see what happens if I click the mount button and then we go it still says not mounted so well, let's see what we need to do okay now instead of mounting it I needed to go to the eraser menu here 
and then select again the OS extended and I just uh, picked the name OS and now it seems to be gray so it's visible here it says it's mounted so let's see if we go back to the installer if it now wants to install okay and there it is well it was not that simple I try again and again and in the end it just turned out it needed a little reboot in between then uh, remove the partition create again the partition and then erase it and you need to choose the OS journal extended and then it will install okay it's still installing and it uh, will take a while if you can see well I guess the installing worked we have music we have a nice uh, <laughs> welcome screen so uh, let's continue okay that uh, did work I connected the network cable and it's immediately providing me with a lot of uh, updates which I uh, will install okay all the work done let's see uh, how fast it boots I click the button needs to initialize some stuff here is the startup sound It starts loading. And there it is. That is fast. It did improve a lot. So, uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, if you like my video, you can put a, a like in the bottom, the thumbs up. And if you think uh, one of my other videos uh, are also interesting, you can just uh, subscribe in the, in the top right. Uh, thank you.